This is an introduction to the Forest Manufacturing Model 236 Vertical Blade Traveling Cable Bandsaw, one of our most popular and versatile bandsaws. Um, obviously, vertical blade, traveling table. The machine is built with four 14 inch diameter wheels. Uh, generally ca can carry most three quarter inch blades, in some circumstances one inch up to a one inch blade. Tension on this machine is screw over spring. We do offer an optional um, air cylinder pneumatic blade tensioning mechanism. The saw comes with a two horsepower, three phase brake motor. We can upgrade that to a five horsepower motor if you're cutting something really stout. As standard, it comes with a magnetic motor starter with a solid state overload. Um, we have the cover off right now. We just finished manufacturing this saw and we didn't want to punch holes in the knockouts. So we just left the cover off to wire it up. Uh, this machine has the optional table mounted start stop button. So you can start and stop, start or stop from either here or there. The machine also has an optional laser guideline light shines down showing where on the workpiece the saw blade will pass. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So as I mentioned, this is one of our most versatile, most common saws. I'll do a couple of test cuts here to give you an idea. As far as safety, which comes up with quite a bit with bandsaws, you can imagine, the first is to only expose the amount of blade you need. So the blade, the upper blade guide, by the way, this machine has the roller blade guides. As standard, as standard it comes with slider carbide style guides, but this has the upgrade roller guides. But back to the point, uh, for safety, keep the blade guarded. We can raise the upper blade guide and the guard to expose however much blade we need to work with here. Raise it all you need, maybe another half inch, but don't expose excess blade. There's two things for you. First off, it keeps the non-working portion of the blade guarded, uh, avoids injury, and by shortening the distance that is uh, supported between the blade guides, you can improve your accuracy in some situations. This has our crank style guide post socket. Uses a worm gear drive so you can crank it up and it won't come down, but better if you actually lock it down. As far as safety, the best way to stay safe with a bandsaw is to keep your hands away from the blade. When making a cut with this machine, my preferred approach is to place the workpiece on the table and then push the table to make the cut. There is often a temp temptation to put your hands on the workpiece and make the cut, but depending on how you place your hands and how careful you are, you expose yourself to additional risks. Put the workpiece on the table, push the table. In some cases, like this is a very light workpiece, it'd probably cut just fine. It'd probably just sit on the table and cut just fine. Matter of fact, I'll even demo that in a moment. But I like to use welding magnets. The table surface is 12 gauge steel, so the magnets stick quite well. And what I'll do is I'll make myself a little impromptu fixture. Put that where I want it. Lock it in with magnets. And now, it's absolutely staying put. I'll knock out a quick test cut here for you. Lower, unlock, lower this down to where it's gonna be just above the workpiece. Lock it in. And we'll do a quick cut with work stops. This is a, the blade today is a three quarter inch wide, eight tooth per inch. It'll work fine on this phone. This phone's just gonna go away. So start, stop buttons. Oh, this is gonna make a mess. Unless I turn on the vacuum system. The machine has underneath the table, a collection for a, a collection point for dust. I hooked up our model 989 dust collection system. 
turn that on. Turn on the saw. Easy as that. This stuff cuts so easy. I can probably make a cut without even locking it down with a magnet. Let's find out. No trouble at all. So yeah, little cut foam, but my grandmother could cut this foam with a butter knife, so that's not much of a challenge. We'll do something a little more interesting. This is high density polyethylene, double all corrugated drainage pipe. Very common application for my customers. Um, a little more interesting application. What they do a lot of times with this stuff is make mitered fittings, elbows, keys, collector bodies, manifolds, all sorts of things. When they manufacture this stuff, they have machines that extrude it in a straight line by the mile. But when you want to make an elbow or a T, uh, they use my bandsaws to cut it. So the straight cut is not interesting. Angled cut is a little more interesting. So again, I'll use my magnets. Lock it in. Adjust my upper blade guide. About right. Clear. Someone who does this for a living, they have all kinds of uh, interesting rules where they they make their miters such that they cut in and out at specific points in the corrugations. But this is what one, tends to happen though. You have to cut through an angle, you're cutting through a lot of material, you're cutting through not much material. You can hear that when I was cutting. But it'll cut the pipe relatively quickly and accurately. table. Oh, I should have turned the dust collection system back on. So this is what happens if you don't run the dust collection system. That's why I recommend it. But that's it. That's the model 236. We call it the fitting and block saw. Obviously usable for making fittings, using for cutting blocks, and many other applications. If you have any questions, please feel free to call or email us at Forest Manufacturing. Um, link should be at the bottom of this video or in the uh, information section. I thank you for watching.